All right, we're gonna get going through our unit five review here um, on similarity and dilations. Um, so if you haven't worked through the review yet, you might want to do that before watching the video. Um, and if you have, we will go ahead and get started through this review. Okay, so question one says, which of the following are dilations? Now remember, these are rules, and with the rule of dilation, you are multiplying both the X and Y by the same number. Um, in this one, you are multiplying by one, um, so that's not changing the size or anything at all. So. Uh, that's not one. Here you're multiplying by two different numbers, so that's not one. Here you're adding and subtracting, so that would just be a translation. Here you're multiplying both by negative a half, so that's a dilation. Okay, it's going to get smaller and actually flip or rotate. Here you're multiplying by a negative and a positive, so that's not one. Here you're multiplying by three, so that's what. Okay, number two, which of the following are similar? Okay, so in order to be similar, the, they have to have the same scale factor or your sides have to be proportional. So here we'll take the smallest side, which is four and then six and then 10. And we'll go in the same order. So the smallest is 10, then 15 and 25. Okay, so they all have to reduce to the same. So if we reduce this one, this we divide both by two and we get two over five. If we divide by three, we get two over five. And if we divide by five, we get two over five. Um, so this one is similar because your sides are proportional. Okay, here, uh, we're not given this other side, uh, but we could find that side. Um, but we could also just use these two sides, okay? Um, so you got three over six and four over 12, and you have a right triangle, okay? So three over six reduces to uh, divide both by three, so a half. And then four over 12, if we divide that um, by four, you get one third. So these are not the same, therefore these are not going to be similar, okay? All right, and here we'll go smallest to largest. So we got two, three, four, and five. Okay, you got 12, sorry. You need to go with um, the right order. So two goes with 23, and then three goes with 18, uh, five goes with 30, and four goes with 12. Okay. So we can see here that it didn't go in the right order. Like this one went from smallest to largest. This does not go smallest to largest. Um, so you can see we can't reduce 24 two over 23, and these are clearly not even close to two over 23. So that one's not similar. All right, the figures are similar. Find X um, if the perimeter, um, find X if the perimeter of W, X, Y, Z is 72. Okay, so the perimeter of this one, if I take six plus three plus five plus 10, uh, 
is 24. Okay, so ooh, what number is that supposed to be? Okay, well, this perimeter is 72. Okay. So we have to figure out what the scale factor going from 24 to 72 is, and that's times three. Okay, they gave us this, that perimeter right there. So if I take this number times three, I will get this side length right here. So 10 times three is 30. So three X minus nine equals 30. Okay, so we're gonna add nine. Three X equals 39 divide by three. X equals 13. Okay, so your perimeter is used as the same scale factor. What must the missing sides be for the shapes to be similar? Okay, so I got 12, 4, 9, X, Y, 2, 3, 4 and a half. So it looks like going from this side to this side or 9 to 4 and a half, you're dividing by 2. Okay, so to go from here to here, so 12 divided by 2 would be 6. That would be y. And to go the opposite direction, you're going to multiply by 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. So that would be x. Okay. So half. And then this way is times 2. And this is showing work here as well. Okay. So here we just have a rotated figure. Um, so 6 to 12, that's a half again. Oop, going that way is times 2, and going this way is a half. Okay, so 10 to y, we're going to multiply by 2, so y is 20, and x, take this side times 2, we get 16. If two shapes are similar, what do we know about their sides? Their sides are proportional. Okay, they have the same scale factor like we did up here. What do you know about their angles? Their angles are congruent. Their angles have to be the same, okay? So same angles, different uh, side, or proportional sides, or same shape, different size. All right, flipping over to the back here. Find the missing values for the shape to be similar. All right, so we have a triangle here. Remember that the angles must be the same. So this X must be 30 degrees as well, okay? And your sides must be proportional. So going from four to 20, that's times five. So everything else must be times five. So three times five is 15, okay? So your angles are the same, your sides are proportional. Here. You have 90 on everything, so X is going to be 90, okay? And your sides are proportional. So it looks like we're going 7 to 14, so that's times 2, and 21 to 42, that's times 2. So go in this direction, we multiply by 2. So go in the other way, we divide by 2. So 42 divided by 2 is 21, and 7 times 2 is 14, okay? So you got X, Y, Z on that one. If the shapes are similar, find X. Okay, so the shapes are similar, so their sides are proportional. In this case, the side is not 32. So don't set it equal to that. Okay, we gotta figure out what is our scale factor. So we're gonna take 12 over 18.
Okay, so we can reduce that. If I divide by six, that's two over three. So going from here to here, it actually gets bigger. Okay, so it'd be three over two, not two over three, so we're getting bigger. So 32 times three over two would give us whatever this number equals. Okay, so we can use the calculator. 32 times three over two is 48. So this right here equals 48 because they're proportional. Okay, so we subtract eight, four X equals 40, divide by four, X equals 10. Do not forget to find the scale factor and figure out is it getting bigger or smaller, okay? That's the important part here. Number eight, name a scale factor that would work for the pictures. Okay, so you got B to B prime, so it gets bigger. So a scale factor that would make something bigger would be bigger than one. So maybe seven over two, that would be an okay scale factor. Here you go from A to A prime, that's getting smaller. So that number needs to be between zero and one. So maybe one fifth. Um, here, it looks like it gets a little bit bigger, uh, but it also inverts, okay? So that would be a negative scale factor. And this doesn't get bigger by much. So maybe negative 1.1, okay? Might be a good scale factor. Um, and you could put decimals on all these. This could be a 7.2. Uh, this could be a 0 0.20. And this could be a fraction, maybe negative um, seven over six, just slightly over one. Find the scale factor and the missing sides. Okay, so you gotta figure out what goes with each other. So these right angles though, so 12 and the 30. Okay, we could divide by three again. So you get four over, um, four over 10 if you divide by three. We could divide by two again. So that's two over five. So two fifths and going from here to here, it gets bigger, so that would be five over two going this direction, okay? So five over two times five would be 12.5. So X there is 12.5. Okay, be okay with some decimal answers in these cases. In problem eight, what is the relationship between sides A, between sides segment AB and A prime B prime? Okay, so it doesn't matter what picture we look at. So in this picture, what is the relationship between those sides? Well, segment AB is parallel to A prime B prime. Okay, they're parallel, no matter which one you look at. These two are parallel, these two are parallel, and even these right here would be parallel as well. If you have perpendicular sides before the dilation, will they still be perpendicular after? What if they were parallel before? Okay, so let's look at this middle one. Here, let's say that this is perpendicular. Will it still be perpendicular after? Yes, it will. Okay, even here, if this is... A, a right triangle here and here, they're still going to be perpendicular. And let's say these were parallel. Okay, are they still parallel? So these two are parallel. Are they still parallel afterwards? Yes. So parallel, if perpendicular or parallel before, they will be perpendicular or parallel after. Okay. So it doesn't change anything about parallel and perpendicular.
Okay, what's the scale factor? Here we talked about this one the other day. Okay, we're getting bigger. Okay, so we're gonna take five over the whole thing, which is 16. That doesn't reduce, but we're getting bigger. So this one doesn't make sense. We're actually gonna use 16 over five is the one that makes sense. Okay, because the shape is getting bigger. Here we're getting smaller and we need ordered pairs. So this ordered pair is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So three, six. And this ordered pair is one, two. So how do you go from three, six to one, two? Okay. Looks like we divided by three. So the scale factor is one third and one third gets smaller. If it was three over one, that shape would get bigger, but we know from A to A prime, our shape is getting smaller. Find the missing side X, okay? So here we've got a big triangle and a small triangle. It may help you to draw out your triangles. So you got a 16 and a 21 in one triangle. You have an X and 17.5. Um, All right, so now we can uh, put up our proportion. So you got 21 over 17.5 equals 16 over X. So you're gonna multiply by your greatest common denominator, 17.5 X. So when you multiply in here, your 17 and a half cancel. So you get 21 X. Here your X is cancel and you get 16 times 17.5. Okay, and the last thing we have to do is divide by 21. So X equals, now we can do this on the calculator here. We're gonna take 16 times 17.5 and then divide it by 21. So you get 13.3 repeating or that's 13 and a third. Okay, those are the same. Don't let the decimals and stuff mess you up. Okay, some old stuff here. Prove the triangles are congruent. Okay, so I know that BC is congruent to EC, and I know that AC is congruent to DC. All that's given. Okay. Here, these two angles are vertical. So I know that angle ACB is congruent to angle DCE, vertical. Now I have side, angle, side. So your triangles are congruent. So triangle ACB is congruent to triangle DCE, and that is side, angle, side. And we're done. That's quick and simple, okay? Side, angle, side there. Make sure your order on here is correct. And the last one, I believe, yep. The last one here, find X if angle ABC is 92. So ABC, so the whole thing is 92. So we're gonna take these two and add them up and set them equal to 92. So 3x and 2x is 5x. 12 minus 6 is 6. 92. So we'll subtract 6. So 5x equals 92 minus 6 is 86. And then divide by 5. 86 divided by 5 is 17.2. Okay. All right, so that is the review for the um, unit E 
test or the, our unit five test. If you have questions, feel free to reach out and I will get those answered. We'll see you in the next video.